Yes, good morning, YouTube. So I recently moved my DBB Link TV server from my PC over to my Synology NAS or Network Attached Storage device. One thing I noticed when I set that up is I came over here to the web streaming setting and I noticed the transcoding feature was disabled. I couldn't enable it. So I thought I would look into that a little bit and I went to DVB Logic's Wikipedia page where they document the various settings. This transcoding page is actually quite well documented. So they talk about how to set up and use transcoding. So transcoding is basically changing video or audio parameters to suit specific requirements. And the two main reasons you might do that, one is if your player only supports a specific format and your content is in a different format, the media server needs to convert from the format that you have to the format you need. And then the other time you might transcode is, say, if you're using wireless connection to a player, say a phone or a tablet, and you have maybe a bandwidth limitation, one thing you can do is shrink your video in size and bandwidth so that it will fit over the connection that you have. And then down here they talk about right here, Windows, Mac, and the Linux platforms, transcoding is enabled by default. And then right down here, Intel-based NAS products, transcoding is disabled by default, except for Intel Evansport-based DS214 Play and DS415 Play NAS models. So those are Synology NAS units. There's actually a couple more uh, newer versions since this page was uh, apparently written. So it says here to enable transcoding on platforms where it's disabled, just navigate to the settings tab and you click enable transcoding. So that sounds simple enough, but turns out there's some backstory behind this. So I found there's a few clues down here in this bottom section of the page, sort of the fine print, so to speak. And I thought that was interesting enough to make a video out of what I found, chasing some of these uh, little hints in here. And then there's actually, I'll do a second video and try to uh, describe some of the CPU differences that aren't obvious at first glance. I'll do the uh, transcoding issues here in the first video and then we'll look at the CPUs. So down here, this is the main thing right here, performance consideration. Video transcoding is very CPU intensive. It says down here, most NAS, Windows, and Linux installations should be able to transcode SG channel properly. However, HD channel transcoding, powerful CPU is required. So that's a kind of a hint right there. This section here talks about your video format conversion. There's a takeaway here. It looks like if all of your media on your server is encoded in H.264 video and AAC audio, it should probably work well with most platforms. The only ones that you might run into trouble with seem to be the web browsers that use this WebM encoding. Apparently this page here was written prior to the release of the native Windows and Mac and Linux DVB link viewer package because I believe that viewer application uses the H.264 video and not the WebM interface because that's the same thing they use on iOS and Android and apparently Windows phones. That would be one takeaway is make sure all your video content is in this format and then you shouldn't have to do any format conversion transcoding. There's a little clue down here. They use this FFmpeg, which is an open source video transcoder library. 
And this is the same package that Synology uses on the NAS for their video station package. So that's the important point. This is a software library that runs on your CPU. And so it talks about, again here, iOS and Android might work well and Firefox and Chrome might work slower. So that, that's a hint to tell you to use the right viewer that uses H.264 video, and then you won't have problems with having to transcode. Then down here at the bottom, they talk about these two Synology disk station play models. They talk about the 214, which is a two-bay NAS released in 2014. There's the 415 as a four-bay released in 2015. And they apparently use a different CPU that's capable of hardware video transcoding. And they say it can handle even HD video stream. A couple of notes, one transcoded stream at a time need to keep the bit rate reasonably high of one megabit or higher and it only does again h264 so you need to uh, make sure all your players digital media players can handle h264 and so anyway that's what uh, dvb logic has to say about transcoding let's take a look here at synology so this is their video station video playback page. They have a couple of explanations of terms here. You got your DLNA. That's what drives a lot of this transcoding as far as the format conversion. And then you've got your digital media adapter. That's your player, whatever is viewing the video. And if you go to the bottom, there's a section they talk about uh, transcoding. And here they mention this hardware acceleration. So if you have one of these special models, you can go to this enable or disable hardware transcoding. We can go over here where they talk about what can the various Synology NAS models do with transcoding. Down here, they've split their uh, NAS devices into two main groups. Group one that can do transcoding and group two that basically can't. And under group one, there's type one and type two, and they describe those later. It looks like the main difference here is the type ones can handle 1080p content, and the type two can maybe only go up to 720p. You see that all the way down here. Then they, they mention a lot of different devices, iOS, Android, Roku players, and your DLNA devices. And then down here at the bottom of the page, they split off these models into the various groups. And here's this 214 play, 415 play. There's also a couple of plus models and then down here are some of the older devices. And uh, I'll take a look at these and what makes them different in the next video. But one takeaway is you need to be really careful. Here's, for instance, model DS1515. And then there's a 1515 plus that's up here. And the same thing here, there's a 250 a 415 play and here's a 416 and like I mentioned there's also a 416 play and a 216 play so in the next video I want to take a look at what's different between these type 1 devices and these type 2 devices because it's not immediately apparent by just looking at the data sheets and the uh, product uh, descriptions of these various models as to what each one does. So we'll look at that in the next video. And uh, if you have any comments or questions, put that in the comment section down below the video description. I'll put a link to the next video up here in the upper right hand corner. And as always, thanks for watching.